Let's look at authoring a simple tube and pipe fitting. I have open on my screen a simple two flanged elbow, 90 degree elbow. It's one of the simplest fittings that you can add to your content center. It doesn't take much to author or publish a fitting of this type. Now ordinarily this would probably be an eye part with a table of various sizes, but in this case I've got just a simple single fitting here. So we're going to go to the manage tab, which I'm already on and we're going to go straight to the authoring tool. Now as I mentioned before the authoring tool has several tools underneath it and the one you're looking for may or may not be on the top so you may use it may need to use the pull down and we're going to grab the tube and pipe authoring tool. Because of its geometry Inventor automatically recognizes that this is an elbow. If it did not you could easily change the, the category if you wanted to put it into a custom category into your content center, one that does not exist in the, in the types, you would select Other, bearing in mind that that category in the content center would need to already be created before you publish the part. There is no way to create a category on the fly while you are publishing, so just keep that in mind. If you're going to publish to a custom category, that category needs to be created first. In our case, we're going to stick with the elbow. The number of connections is in fact two, but I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick here. The end treatment always defaults to threaded, no matter what your fitting is, and if you look at both connections, they both say that it's threaded. It recognizes the nominal size as two, but I need to change that to flanged, and I'm going to need to do that for both connections. Now this isn't such a big deal on a two connection fitting, but if you have a fitting or a part that has multiple connections that are the same size, this little trick could help just a bit. What I do is I reduce the number of connections down to one. I change the end treatment to flanged. I could change the size if necessary. And then I re-add the second fitting, the second connection. Now look at the second connection. It automatically grabbed the same end treatment as the first. Again, with two end treatments, this is not a big deal, but if you get into five, six, even ten on a tank or something, this can help you out a lot. So, let's do the work. Returning to connection number one, I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to slide my part over. You have to specify the connection point and the axis for each connection, and you can specify the gender. In the case of a flange, it usually defaults to neutral. To neutral. Excuse me. So let's grab the point. This is the actual point where it will connect to another fitting and you want to pick a diameter on that point. So let's pick this diameter here. And then for the axis you need to pick another diameter along the axis of connection. It can be the same diameter in a situation like this, but you need to watch the direction of the axis. So we're going to select this and the arrow is pointing out away from the fitting, that's what you want. This does not designate the direction of flow in the pipe. It has nothing to do with that. It's simply the direction of the connection. And like a magnet, the connection directions must always be opposing. So that means your arrow must always be pointing out away from the part. So we'll jump over to connection number two. And I'm going to grab this diameter, change to axis, grab the same diameter and you'll notice my arrow is pointing out away from the part. Now for engagement on a flange I don't change this. I leave this at 0% of 0. It's going to connect face to face. If you were working on threaded connections or socket connections and you know that there's only going to be a certain percentage of the full length of the threads that you want to have an engagement on, you can specify that in this area here. If you're using isogen, which I do not, you can fill in any of the isogen information right in this area. If it's already on your part, the authoring tool will pick that up when it, when it grabs the part. So that information can be there. That's it. That is all it takes to author this elbow. If you want to double check your end connections, you can just simply scroll back through the connection points, make sure they're in the right spot, make sure the arrow is going the right way, and hit OK. Now it's going to tell us that this part is authored successfully and it's ready to be published. So why don't we go ahead and do that right away. The Publish tool is also on the Manage tab, a little bit further down the end, right in the middle. Next to the editor, right in the middle, Publish Part. 
So let's select that tool. Now you want to tell it what library to publish to. It has to be a read-write library and if you have more than one they will show up in this pull down here. As you can see I have only the one. You could select the language if you want to change the, the default language and then select next. It automatically recognizes the category based on what you selected as type in the authoring tool. If you had selected other this is where you would tell it specifically what other category you wanted to put this into. This would probably be a custom category and as I mentioned before that category would need to be created before you get to this step so that it can show up in the menu here. So we're going to leave this on the default elbow and select next. Now it's going to look at the nominal size parameters and they're automatically mapped from the fitting to the category parameters. But if there were any other parameters you wanted to map, you could do that at this step here, such as your isogen information. So we're going to just select next. And now here's where you decide what you're going to see when you're placing this fitting during uh, placement in tube and pipe or if you're just placing them manually from the content center. The little selection menu will come up and what it shows you in that menu is what you decide here. You can have it come up by your part numbers, by materials if you have more than one material in the family, or by nominal size. Usually with pipe fittings I choose nominal size because I am going to be using a table of multiple sizes. Sometimes you can mix them if you have more than one material in your family of elbows for example. You might want to have nominal size and material so you can narrow your selection down to a two inch stainless steel for example. I'm going to stick with nominal size for now. Push the arrow to knock that over to the key columns and select next. Now your family properties. This is all entirely up to you. This is what you're going to name your family. The family name and the family folder name usually follow one another. If I change this one, you'll notice the bottom one changes with it. So we'll just change the one. And then your family description can be whatever you want it to be. That's what will pop up in the content center editor to help you figure out what you're looking at. Your standard this is very important if you plan on using filters either in the content center editor itself or in your selection tools. For example, in uh, frame generator, this is not a frame piece, but in frame generator you can, you can search the content center by the entire content or by just a specific standard. So adding this information comes in handy if you want to narrow your searches down later on. So that let's leave this the way it's set up because that's one of the standards I like to use. Sorry about that. So we're going to select next. This gives you just a preview now of what you're going to be seeing in the content center window. If you have an alternate thumbnail you can load that here but most people just choose the default and go on to the next step which is publish. Publish completed successfully. Now let's verify that by going to the editor and selecting my elbow category and I will open this up to my custom content and there's my two inch elbow. Now this is very important once you've published your part check the content center editor immediately because you're gonna find that there might be some things that need to be changed. In this example the file name is not what I want. It came in because I selected nominal size as my key column so we're going to edit the family table and I'm going to change that right off the bat. I'm going to go to column properties and I'm going to remove the expression that it put in there automatically. I'm going to map this to an I property description and then I'm going to manually type in my name. Now this will be the file name and it will also end up being my description in Inventor once the part has been placed. When you're happy with everything in your family table, simply hit OK. Publish successfully to the selected library and that part is now ready to use. 
That's really all there is to authoring and publishing these, some of these simple fittings. There are others that contain a few more steps and we will demonstrate those in separate videos.